So hello everyone. Hope you are all doing good. Today we are going to discuss about trial box and more probably we are going to discuss about lenses in the trial box, right? So over here you can see these are the red and the blue lenses. These are the the lenses which are in the corners or on the edge or peripheries. We you, you can call them spherical lenses and the lenses which are in the center or in the middle of the box these are the cylindrical lenses as you can see that the spherical lenses are more in number as compared to the cylindrical lenses so it is because that we don't use cylindrical lenses as much as we use spherical lenses and we know that why we use these lenses it's for the correction of the refractive errors in our eye so spherical lenses are more probably used because patient are there are patient more who have either hypermetropia or either myopia as compared to my uh, astigmatism right so astigmatism can be corrected with spherical as well as cylindrical lenses therefore we don't uh, use many or much cylindrical lenses so we have that is why we have more cylindrical and uh, more spherical lenses sorry and less spherical lens sorry it, it turned out we have more spherical lenses and less cylindrical lenses so over here you can see that we'll continue the trial box have total lenses of about 222 286 or 290 it's a very important viva question that how many lenses are present in the trial book so you should know the quantity or the limit that we have 220 to 286 or 290 range and it's different for uh, different uh, brands of the trial box right so we have either spherical lenses or either cylindrical lenses and i have already told you that cylindrical lenses is less as compared to the spherical lenses in the trial box so spherical lenses range from 0 0.1 to 2 20 diopters and cylindrical lenses range from 0 0.1 to 2 6 diopters right so how many types you can see in the uh the this picture of trial box that there are two rows of sphere over here and there are two rows of spherical lenses over here as same goes for the cylindrical lenses two rows for sphere cylinder are over here sorry and two uh, rows of uh, cylindrical lenses are over here in the blue color but the color is different and we have two two right pairs so why is it so because we have two types of lenses it's either convex lens or either concave lens right so these red lenses are convex lenses and these blue lenses or black lenses are the concave lenses and it can alter in some cases the black are the positive or red are the negative so it will depend on the type or the category or the brand of the trial box you are using right so over here there are two types of lenses it's either convex or concave and convex lens will will go for that it's plus lens it has converging abilities it converges the light rays in a single point uh, so it's converging lens as well and it is used for hypermetropia or the patients that ha don't have the ability to see near objects clearly right so we use convex lens for them and these are base to base prisms we know that our uh, lenses are made up of prisms right so prism with base plus base connected are the convex lenses so they are thick in the center and concave lenses are minus lenses or they, they are diverging lenses so they diverge the light or they help in the less convergence of the light right so we use concave lenses for myopia patients who have the uh, who have high power or who have high converging abilities so we use concave lens so that that high convergence can be decreased and light may light rays may diverge and focus on the retina completely because over here what happens that the power of the eye is more or the converging ability of an eye is more so it focuses 
more rapid, rapidly and uh, more quickly before the retina or we can say in front of the retina. So we use concave lens so that it can converge uh, uh, less and it can diverge more and uh, come and uh, focus on the retina exactly or clearly right so over here you can see that it's apex to apex connection of the prisms so it's thick in the periphery and thin in the middle right so how can you identify that either the lens is convex or concave it's these are all very important viva questions which i am sharing over here with you all so you should learn or you should understand these all concepts very clearly so how can you identify that either a lens which have been provided to you is convex or a concave lens so there are three ways you can identify either lenses plus or minus right so you should know on the basis of image size either it's getting enlarged or getting small right it's either thick or thin and from where it's thick or thin or it's either converging ability is um, either the convergent lens is having the width movement or the against movement the movement of the lens you have to see right so magnification is the ability of the plus lens as you can see with the name that plus lens recommends something which you are adding right so when you will focus any object under the convex lens you will see that it is getting enlarged or you or as the from the normal image so you will see the magnification of the image as compared to the concave lens right so what is the ability uh, the capability of concave lens that it minifies the image if you are focusing any object under the concave lens you will see that it will become small as compared to the normal image so the thickness of the concave lens is thin from the center and thick from the periphery because apex is no, over here in the center there is apex to apex prisms joint so it's thin in the per center and thick in the periphery and the central part of the convex or plus lens is thick because over here there are base to base prisms connected and movement of the converging lens is always against movement and diverging lenses with movement you have to learn it very carefully that what happens what does it mean that against and with movement you are focusing onto an object suppose this is an object or an image you are observing so what happens and you uh, you place a lens over it right so what happens when you take lens or move lens from into the right direction or right side what happens if the image is moved in opposite direction like in the left position and you are moving in the right lens is moving in the right uh, side right so what happens that this opposite movement will show against movement and this against movement is the property of the conve uh, convex lens or a converging lens so plus lens have an opposite movement right so you can learn it like that the convex lens has an opposite movement and the concave lens have the same movement so what happens over here if you focus into an image and if you move it in the uh, the you move the lens in the right side the image will also move in the right side if it happens uh, so that means that this lens is the concave lens right so this is how you can identify either a lens is positive le plus lens sorry or is either the minus lens so now we'll go for the cylindrical and spherical lenses introduction or explanation. So firstly, I have already told you that it ranges from 0 0.12 to 6 diopters and is used for astigmatic patients. Now what is astigmatism? It is the condition in which there is a change in the corneal curvature, right? Corneal curvatural change is the astigmatism. It can be either lens, but because we can we are correcting it with spectacles so we'll consider it okay it's corneal curvature change right corneal change of the curvature it will be the astigmatism and the due to this curvature chain light is focusing on two 
a point more on two more than one two one points right so it can be two three focal points in an eye so it will cause blurring distortions to the patient right or confusion as well so what happens over here to cure that specific curvature to treat that specific curvature we use uh cylindrical lenses on that specific curvature so that light may be focused on a single point on the retina right so what happens in the cylindrical lens that it has a power in only one meridian right so over here you can see these are the axes these are marks you can identify how you can identify a cylindrical lens they have an axis marks over it right their movement is torsional movement what have what means with the torsional movement when you focus an object under the a uh, cylindrical lens and you move you try to move the lens you will see the image in the lens right will be torsional there will be a torsional rotational or the circular movement will be ob observed and if it happens that lens is the cylindrical lens right this is a second point you can identify that it's either a cylindrical or a spherical lens first point is that it has axis mark second movement it will be the torsional and third is the elongated and the tilted image what happens with this you have made a cross on a paper and you focus it under the or observe it under the cylindrical lens right so what happens is this image will be elongated and tilted from normal position so it means that it's yeah it's a cylindrical lens so i have already told you that it has power in only one meridian so there are two meridians in a cylindrical lens one is a power meridian and one is the axis meridian right so all we have to always align axis to the specific axis where the patient have the change in the curvature of the cornea right but the power is always 90 apart to it in the power meridian right so if it is a axis meridian of this lens the power will most probably be over here 90 apart right and this axis meridian will have zero power or the minimum power so minimum power will all of a cylindrical lens will always be on the axis meridian and the maximum power will be 90 apart to the uh, axis meridian and it is power meridian it ranges i have already told you from 0.1 to to 6 diopter so how it is these lenses are in the trial box what is the range 0.12 lenses over there after 0.212 diopters you will see that there will be 0.25 diopter lens 0.25 diopter to 4 diopter you can see 0.25 interval diopter interval in the lenses right in a trial box 0.12 then 0.25 then 0.50 then 0.1.0 then 1.25 1.5 and uh, 1.75 so and it's go it goes on over here you it's some um, there's a mistake uh, you have to remember there's 0.255 0.75 then 1 1.25 right so next is from 4 diopter to 5 diopter there will be 5 diopter gap in the lenses on a trial box that will range from 4 diopter 4.5 5 three lenses will be over there right after 4 then 5 diopter to 6 diopter you will see one diopter interval of the lenses in the trial box there will be 5 and 6 there will no 5.5 diopter lens in the trial box it is what it means over here spherical lenses have the same power in all the meridian that is why we use it in the myopia and hypermetropia because in myopia and hypermetropia there is a error in the either power of the uh, eye or in the axial length right so there is no curvatural or specific or no change in a specific point so we there we use spherical lenses for its correction where power is on the all or in all meridians right and they don't have any axis mark on it so and i've already told that power will remain same in every meridian so how you see these lenses placed in a trial box you will see a 0.12 diopter lens and after 0.12 diopter lens you will see 0.25 diopter lens 
After 0 0.25, there will be 0 0.5, then 0 0.75, then 1, 1.25, 1.5. And till 6 diopters, you will see 0 0.25 diopter interval or a gap. Then after 6 to after 6 diopter, you will see 0 0.5 diopter gap till the 10 diopters. What does it mean? That you will see 6 diopter lens in the trial box, then 6.5, 7, 7.5, 8, 8.5, there will be no 2.6.25 uh, lens or either 6.75 lens in the trial box. From 10 diopters to 14 diopters, you will see one diopter gap, right? So it will be 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. There will be no 10.5 lens, right, in the lens, uh, in the trial box. N then there will be 14 to 20 diopters. You will see two diopter gap. That means that from 14, then 16, then 18, then 20. There will be no uh, 15 diopter lens. There will be no 15.5, 15.25. There will be no such lenses in the trial box. So this was all about spherical lenses. Now, what are the lens aperture? How lens uh, look like in the trial box? In the first picture, you have seen the colorful images here, red and blue. These are the half uh, sorry reduced aperture lenses right with which are made up of plastic rim surrounded so over here we'll see its detail there are two type of lens aperture in the trial box there the lenses may be of, in, of two types either they are full apertured lenses or they are reduced aperture lenses. Now, both of them have 38 millimeter diameter. Lenses have 38 millimeter diameter. But in the full aperture, 38 millimeter diameter is of is the lens, right? Complete lens is of 38 millimeter diop millimeter diameter, and the, it will be surrounded with a thin silver rim, right? But in the reduced aperture. The lens will be of 20 millimeter diameter, but the rest of the 18 millimeter will be this plastic rim that is surrounded, right? So over here, adding this 18 plus 20 millimeter diameter will make 38 millimeter diameter. And over here, you can see these are the plastic rims that can be either black, blue or red color. And what is the advantage of the full aperture lenses that it passes complete light rays to the eye. And it is good for the old patients and low vision patients because old and low vision patients are unable to see in dim light or in the low light. So more as more light focuses on the eye, in the eye, more uh, appreciable image will be formed in the patient eye and patient will appreciate its surrounding that yeah I can see right so over here you can see because it's just there is only a silver thin rim so it will not block any kind of light ray and all the light rays will peripheral and central light rays will focus on the retina but what is the advantage of reduced aperture that it will remove the spherical abrasions now what is spherical abrasions over here in this image you can see that only the central rays are focused on the retina or you can see that only central rays are passing from the uh, reduced aperture lens so the peripheral rays are blocked and will not focus on the retina what happens normally that the central rays are passing to the retina um, more quickly and uh, the peripheral rays will strike over here change their path and then focus on the retina so will the peripheral rays will take time to focus now what happens in this procedure that central rays are focused they'll make an image but after few seconds or a few nanoseconds what happens the peripheral rays are also focused so there will be some kind of distortion or problem a patient can see so this is the spherical abrasions right so that is why they block these peripheral rays so that patient may not feel discomfort right so this is reduced aperture advantage and this was all about the lenses and uh, what are lenses what types of lenses identification and all i hope you have uh, get to know a lot of about the lenses so if you like the video do uh, 
like, comment, and if you have any query, do comment in the comment section. Thank you so much.